Hi everyone, I am back with a new story, The Heron and the Crane, written by John Yemin and illustrated by Quentin Blake, a bagula or a saras ki kahani. Once upon a time, in a swamp, there lived a heron and a crane. They didn't live together. The heron had built her scrappy nest on a dry mound at one end of the swamp. and the crane had built his which looked very much the same at the other end one day as the crane was standing gazing at himself in the shallow muddy water it occurred to him that he was rather lonely he scratched the back of his right leg with his left foot for a while and then said to himself it's high time that i got married but who could be his wife it didn't take him long to decide on the heron because she was the only unmarried bird who was roughly the same shape and size as he was there were some elderly lady ducks but they were out of the question and so after grooming himself very carefully the crane steeped gracefully through the still water until he came to the other end of the swamp where the heron lived good morning heron said the crane feeling a little embarrassed because although he had been thinking hard on his walk he still hadn't quite decided how to put his suggestion good morning crane replied the heron who had no idea why he was visiting her won't you come in she took a step backward to make room for him to stand on the edge of her nest she would have invited him to sit down but there wouldn't have been room for all the legs will you marry me asked the crane suddenly he had meant to lead up to this subject rather gradually but in his excitement he couldn't think of anything else to say the heron was very taken aback she just wasn't prepared for such a question she lost her head and cried marry you goodness gracious what a ridiculous idea just look at you you are all legs and neck and those awful knobby knees the crane was very hurt by this outburst He cast a sad look over his shoulder at his knees they were rather bony and what's more you just couldn't keep me in the fish she shouted this so loudly that he knew it was time to go without a backward glance he turned and made his way slowly through the swamp to his own nest at the other end when he had disappeared from view the heron thought it over she was very unhappy about the way she would behaved i have been very unkind to insult him like that she thought and as for the fish well i am perfectly capable of catching my own so she decided to go and apologize to the crane and offer to marry him after all she left her nest and picked her way gracefully through the swamp water hanging down her head very coyly as she approached the crane he was standing rather sulkily with his back to her but it was obvious that he had heard her coming crane she called softly he didn't answer crane she called i have come to apologize i didn't really mean all those nasty things i said and i take them all back he didn't move crane it would make me very happy to become your wife on hearing this the crane turned around and gave her a stony stare thank you very much for your kind offer he said but as you previously remarked i don't want an extra beak to feed i'm sorry but marriage between us is out of the question there was a moment of complete silence over the swamp 
before the heron burst into floods of tears and hurried off back to her own nest. When she was out of sight, the crane thought it over to himself and suddenly felt very miserable. Why was I so cruel? he said. I want to marry her and now I have hurt her feelings. There is nothing for it. I shall just have to go and apologize for my behavior. He really did feel very ashamed of himself and to make up for it, he caught a juicy frog which he carried dangling by one leg from his beak. He steeped hastily through the swamp and stopped a little way from the heron's nest. He was so agitated that the frog was quivering. Heron? He mumbled nervously. I'm sorry for what I said a little while ago and I have brought you. The heron didn't give him time to finish. Her pride had been wounded and now she was in quite a temper. I don't want your pity, you brute. She screeched. I know you shot. I would rather remain alone until the end of my days than marry someone as hard-hearted as you. This wasn't the welcome the crane had hoped for. His beak half opened in dismay and the frog fell with a plop into the wet mud. This is the end then, he thought to himself and turned to make his way back to the other end of the swamp. When he had gone, the heron said to herself, How sad he looked. I'm afraid I punished him too severely. I do so want to marry him. And what if he should do something terrible? Why? He may even throw himself into the swamp and drown. This was not really likely as the swamp water was nowhere more than ankle deep and the crane was a rather large bird. But the idea was enough to terrify the heron. She almost ran to the other end of the swamp to reassure herself that the crane was still alive. When she arrived, she gasped breathlessly. Oh, crane, thank goodness you're safe. Please say you forgive me for my... The crane interrupted her. Oh, I have seen these moods of yours before. One minute you are as meek as a water wall and the next you are screeching your head off at me. No, thank you. I am... And before he could finish, she had turned and walked away, back to her own nest at the other end of the swamp. There is really no need to tell you that the crane very soon thought things over. But of course, the heron wouldn't listen to him. And so they went on day in, day out, backwards and forwards from one end of the swamp to the other. And if you happen to go there, you will probably find them still at it. Do you think they will ever make up their minds?